You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. What's it like behind closed doors? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Harry's wife is a middle-mid-range narcissist. This means she operates a facade. That means that in public, we see a version of herself that is created by her narcissism, and that that facade is created to make her seem like she's kind and interesting and compassionate and empathic, in a way trying to duplicate Diana, Princess of Wales. The creation of that facade is there to control people so that they think that she's lovely and therefore they will do her bidding, approve of her, admire her, etc. It's also created so that they provide her with fuel. It's also created so that she can leverage off it in some way with regard to the residual benefits. She doesn't sit there and think to herself, I need to create a facade. She believes that's what she is. But it is just one manifestation of her narcissism to portray that to the outside world. Mid-range and greater narcissists all use facades, though they have differing types. And in the case of Harry's wife, hers is to generate a, uh, an impression that she's kind, lovely, caring, compassionate, empathic, with a little bit of fun in there also. That is a preserve of the middle-mid-range narcissist. However, away from the public eye, away from the gaze of many individuals, there is a different side to her. This different side is another manifestation of her narcissism, whereby sometimes there will be a veneer that is shown to Prince Harry, a veneer of being kind, the love bombing, the golden period. But also, because he's in the sustained devaluation, what he will witness is, of course, unpleasant behaviours. But it's not just him. You see, behind closed doors, away from the public image that her narcissism has created, Harry's wife will also generate devaluing behaviours towards those that cross her path. A member of staff at Tertiary Source will be spoken to harshly. Members of Buckingham Palace staff, away from that public gaze, will be shouted at, will be bullied, will be invalidated, will be belittled. Usually this is done by withering put-downs, sarcastic remarks and direct insults. That, of course, is the devaluing behaviour that is being shown. There'll be other instances behind closed doors where she'll behave with a pity play. Can you help me? It's not fair. I need you to sort this out for me because... And she will approach it with a modicum of charm, although she's not somebody that oozes with lots and lots of charm, but she'll dole out a little bit of it, which would sit alongside with flattery. But where somebody has become painted black because they threaten her sense of control, and that her interaction with them is behind closed doors, away from public gaze, then her narcissism compels her to behave towards that person, invariably a tertiary or secondary source, to devalue them. She will, of course, regularly use her status as the Duchess of Sussex, even though, of course, she doesn't want anything to do with the royal family, demonstrating the hypocrisy of her behaviour, to triangulate people with that. I'm the Duchess, you must do as I say. I'm the Duchess, you ought to have done this for me. I'm the Duchess, I am entitled to talk to you in this manner. She is no better than any of the people that she has been dealing with. That title was only afforded to her as a consequence of the Queen granting it, and ultimately, just because somebody has a title with regard to being a monarch, a prince, a princess, duke or duchess, etc., that makes them no better than anybody else. It is just a historical quirk that they happened as a consequence of the actions of their ancestors to be bequeathed that title. In some instances, of course, people are given titles just for life, the life peers in the United Kingdom, and they can't pass them on. And they're just granted as a consequence of the fact that they offered some cash to the relevant politician, I beg your pardon, as a consequence of their charitable doings. A reward, and the affording of status and other privileges that come with it. 
In that instance, you might argue that those, person, those people may well have earned the title as a consequence of the creation of industry, dedication to charity, perhaps making particular, uh, they have particular sporting prowess. So there's sub substance behind it rather than being a chinless wonder that has been born into status. But with Harry's wife, she is amongst the group that has no talent and has just got this title as a consequence of who she married. Nevertheless, she will triangulate people with that title in order to get the prime aims. Her narcissism deems it fair game for her to believe that she is in effect a queen, that she is above everybody else, and haughtily and dismissively invalidate and belittle people. Therefore, those members of staff, those members uh, who do the nursery, nursery work, the caring for the children, the cooking and the cleaning, running the press offices, etc., the people that deal with the PR, all of the individuals behind the scenes will at some time experience the haughty behaviours of Harry's wife because she believes that she knows best, that she's the expert at everything. And when somebody politely and constructively points out that they have a better idea than the one that she has, that would be met with a withering gaze, sarcasm, put-downs, etc. Because their suggestion that they know better than her is challenge fuel and a threat to control, and her narcissism will direct her in the appropriate circumstances, namely where there aren't many other people around, to put down those people with a, what is known as a corrective devaluation. Those tertiary and secondary sources are given corrective devaluations to nullify the threat to control that they pose by their failure to do what she wants. As for Harry, he is the one that gets the most devaluing behaviours. That's because he's the one that spends most time with her, and now, as a consequence of having moved into the sustained devaluation, he is the one who, behind closed doors, gets the full gauntlet of devaluing behaviours. He is the one that will find himself triangulated with objects. Harry, what have you done with the keys to the chicken coop? Have you lost them again? And thus, he'll be told off in that regard. He'll have lies delivered to him to control him. He'll be future faked in a way which is malign. He'll find himself triangulated with people. For instance, X wouldn't have done it this way, Harry. Why can't you be more like X? I'm off to go and see Y at the Beverly Hills. I don't know when I'll be back. He'll be given silent treatments, the cold shoulder by her, glares, sitting there and sulking as he repeatedly attempts to get her to talk to him. There'll be instances of absent silent treatment where she just disappears and he doesn't know where she's gone. There may even be physical violence, pushing, slapping, clawing at him in order to punish him for his transgressions. There'll be instances of invalidation and belittlement, putting him down, telling him that he's useless, comparing him to other people, again, triangulation by person. She'll withdraw from him. She will deny things in order to frustrate him when he puts forward perhaps an allegation to her. She will provoke him. She'll engage in huge amounts of protection, projection rather. Why do you always have to spoil things, Harry? Why do you always have to pick a fight? Why do you always have to stand and sulk? She will repeatedly blame shift, making out that all of the problems that occur are as a consequence of his inability, incompetence and aptitude. Repeatedly she will revise history with him, gaslighting him, being argumentative, telling him he's not good enough deflecting from his queries, giving him a list of required improvements, for instance, with regard to what he has to eat in order to lose weight and the way that he looks. She'll make false accusations about what he's been doing, and the accusations will come out of nowhere. She'll use vagueness against him. A whole range of mid-range manipulations that'll be used for Harry, and life for him behind closed doors is certainly not going to be pleasant. It'd be bewildering, upsetting, and of course, devaluing. I can tell you that that's the case without actually being there, because I know the way that a middle-mid-range narcissist will behave towards the intimate part of primary source when it comes to the sustained devaluation. It will largely be a place of Harry being put down and given silent treatments, an icy atmosphere that the staff know the best thing to do is to stay out of the way, and increasingly, that will what Harry will be doing, retreating from her because at least then he gets a quiet life until she then reappears once the
the sustained devaluation is over, doling out all sweetness and light once again, possibly even inviting him back into the marital bed for some spicy poontang. That is a look at the way that Harry's wife behaves behind closed doors, both to secondary and tertiary sources, and of course the most important of all, Harry as the intimate partner, primary source. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.